Oh, I should not have done that acid before the taping. Hi, everybody. I'm Michael Schaub. And I'm Janet Potter. And this is The Book Report, the Internet's weekly literary talk show. That's right. And on today's installment of The Book Report, Janet and I are going to be talking about books that we have read over the past month. One of the books I read this summer that I was very excited about is Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. Brian Lee O'Malley is the guy who wrote the Scott Pilgrim series. It's a real, like, accurate slice of life depiction of what it's like to be in your 20s, but not be, like, the coolest. Scott Pilgrim is very much about, like, the people that I would have been friends with. And I think there was actually a lot of that that was lost in the movie because they had to condense six books into one and so they only had time for the action. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The best parts of the books are like when all the friends are hanging out. So one of the things I like about Seconds is that while it's still it's still got like a plot and it sort of has a supernatural element to it, like Scott Pilgrim right did. Um, there's a lot more time for that. It's about a woman in her twenties who is a chef and is starting to have doubts about where her life is headed. And then she finds a magic mushroom <laughs> that uh, if she eats it and writes down a mistake and goes to sleep, the mistake will be erased. Here's a really pretty page. One of the books I read in the past month uh, was called Gangsterland by Todd Goldberg. It is a, uh, a book about a mafia hitman in Chicago. Um, so I'm sure you can relate being a hitman in Chicago. Yeah. This hitman, he, he kills... Uh, uh, three FBI agents, sort of unintentionally, uh, not really unintentionally. He was on heroin at the time, which is, you know, an excuse. We've all been there. We've all been uh, there. And so the mob uh, uh, decides, it, rather than kill him, to send him to Las Vegas, where he undergoes radical plastic surgery and hides out there uh, as a rabbi. It's a really great book. I'm, I'm not a, I don't read crime fiction that much, but I'm a big fan of James Elroy and Elmore Leonard, and he is kind of like them. Well, while you were reading about gangsters, I was reading about Vaccination on Immunity by Eula Biss. I think that's how you say her name, Eula. I saw her read several years ago, and I was like, who is this angel woman? Like, she's so (laughs) wise. When she had her son a few years ago, she started doing lots of research on vaccination. So the book is kind of about her research. She talked to a lot of like public health officials and doctors, um, lots of other moms. She's exactly who I would want to explain to me all the hot issues of the day. I did read a really great novel uh, by Christopher Beha called Arts and Entertainment. It's so good. It's a, it's a satire about reality television and uh, celebrity, basically. It's about um, this actor named Handsome Eddie. He's an actor, a failed actor. Like he was on Law and Order a couple of times, and uh, now he teaches drama uh, at a Catholic high school in New York. And his uh, wife and he are trying to get pregnant. They don't have enough money for the fertility treatments and for the IVF, and so uh, Eddie Hartley decides to sell a sex tape that he made with his ex-girlfriend, who is now a very, very famous television star. And not to spoil the ending, but everything goes great. It was the best decision he ever... No, it was, <laughs> obviously it goes really poorly. It's really dark, very uh, religious in a lot of way. Christopher Beha is a, uh, a Catholic writer, and it's a very religious, humane book. But it's also very, very funny. There's a reality TV show in the book called Huffing and Cuffing, which is, <laughs> quote, about cops addicted to paint thinner. Uh, and then there's other reality shows called Scavenger Detroit and We Drink Too Much, which is great. I then read I've been Slash by Slash. Yeah. yeah, you did. When I was on vacation this summer in Asheville, North Carolina, I read Pulphead by John Jeremiah Sullivan. One of the essays in Pulphead is about Axl Rose. It's a profile of Axl Rose he wrote in 2006. And before this, I really didn't know anything about Guns N' Roses. So I've basically just been like absorbing the totality of Guns N' Roses mythology for coming up on three months. 
And nice. I just love them so much. Like, I think they are the platonic ideal of a rock band. Like, the music's oh. good. The image is good. The stories are crazy. Like, the characters are compelling. They, like, flamed out. Like, everything about it is yeah. just quintessential rock and roll. And uh, I don't know if you can tell by the denim dress with stars on it that I'm wearing, but I didn't yeah. go through a rock and roll phase. <laughs> I love it. I mean, fun fact, Slash's mom dated David Bowie. When Slash was like super heavy into all the drugs, Mm -hmm. nobody Uh could intervention him away from them. His mom had David Bowie call him and like give him advice about getting off drugs, which has got to be a sobering, literally a sobering moment when David Bowie is like, yeah, you have done way too many drugs. I also read a book by a guitarist. I don't know if that's a good segue or not, but uh, I'm just going to go with it. It's called uh, Wolf in White Van by a Dunder. Yeah, and it does the cool thing. It's about a guy named... uh, Sean Phillips. (laughs) Phillips. I had to write that down because I'm old. Uh, But he's the the creator of a male-based role-playing game called Trace Italian. The players send send in their moves, you know, by mail, by the postal service. He's the creator of this game, and uh, it happens that two teenagers start playing it and end up taking it way too seriously. I just thought it was amazing, and it's so, you know, it, to me when you see a, a, a musician or a, an actor write a novel or something, at least I'm always kind of skeptical, like, yeah, all right. Uh, but God, I thought this was so, so brilliant. I loved it. So obviously after I finished reading uh, Slash's autobiography, I could then only turn to the biography of William Howard Taft. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is this is such a vintage Janet book to read. I don't know if people, uh, viewers know about uh, your blog where you, you read books about the president. At Times Dull is a project I've been doing since 2009 where I'm reading a biography of every American president in chronological order. I have reached William Howard Taft, number 26 or 27. Don't ask. Don't ask. <laughs> Roosevelt essentially convinced Taft to run for president against Taft's wishes. I mean, uh-huh. he went along with it, but he wasn't really into being president. But Roosevelt, yeah. you gotta do it, you gotta do it. Very persuasive guy. So Taft became president, and then Roosevelt turned his back on him, um, uh-huh. returned from his trip to Africa, and just made Taft's life as hard as possible. Was he regarded as a good president, Taft? No, his main yeah. legislative battle that he won his main successful legislative battle was over uh, second class postal rates. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> well, that, would you say that William Howard Taft was the slash of the American presidency or more like the Izzy Stradlin? It's not that there's not parallels between Axel and Slash and Roosevelt and Taft. Thank you for watching uh, The Book Report. Uh, I'm Michael Schaap. I'm Jana Potter. You'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. See you next week. See you next week. Hey, John, you're a really great guitarist. Thanks, Lash. <laughs> uh, you're also a good guitarist. I know. Although I think I'm probably a better songwriter. <laughs>